friends. Today's video is going to be um, a tour of my food storage and I don't think I've actually taken you through exactly what I store down there. I've done like some inventory things and um, we've briefly chatted about it but I don't think I've taken you like exactly what I have on the shelves and I just thought that that would be helpful for people who are just like at a loss as to what they need to be storing. So my personal philosophy is I store everything that we eat. I have very few things that are just for like emergency, you know, like end of the world type stuff because I really wanted to keep um, a good rotation down there so that I didn't waste any food. So I don't go by the you know, there's like all these recommendations of like how many pounds of oats you need per person or whatever. My brain doesn't do math like that. The math doesn't make sense to me. So I have gone through and I just have ingredients for the meals that we make. And a while back, I tried to go through and see like, okay, how many breakfast meals do I have? How many lunch meals do I have? To try to get a rough estimate of exactly how many months worth of food I had. And so that's what I did a while ago. It was very time consuming, but it makes sense to me that way. So let me take you down in my um, storage room and show you the shelves and exactly what I am storing. All right, it's kind of messy down here. I didn't really you know, straighten or prepare anything, but I try to keep it pretty well organized. So let's just go down here first. Down here we have extra feminine products. We have um, some first aid type stuff, some extra shampoo and conditioner. Um, yeah, just basically some extra toiletries. I could honestly work on this section a bit more because um, I could just use some more first aid type stuff. In here, this whole bucket is rice. We do enjoy rice. Um, I don't know exactly how many pounds of rice I have. I need to do another inventory and just make sure that I have as much as I think that I do. And then here is the flour that I buy in bulk, put it in the freezer, and then I um, vacuum seal it. So this is all flour that I am working through. Coming up here, some diced tomatoes. These are the only two home canned diced tomatoes that I have left. And I don't think I'm doing diced tomatoes from my garden this year. I think I'm making it all into sauce. So that's what I plan on doing. These are our favorite brown rice ramen noodles from Costco. They don't always have them. So when they do, I like to stock up. So that's about four deep back there. Here are some freeze-dried items. This is freeze-dried corn, which is delicious. Probably one of my favorite things to freeze-dry. We have some canned pears. This is some different types of soup. Those are like squash, and this one's a curry tomato soup. I just like having those for like quick lunch options. These are... Um, zucchini and summer squash freeze-dried so you can add those to soups or I can make them into I have a really good snickerdoodle zucchini bread recipe I will try to link that if I can remember have some barbecue sauce back there this is cranberry relish that I made out of cranberries that I had in my freezer I don't love it though I wish I had just made like cranberry juice so next time I will know that I have some blueberry pie filling back there that I probably need to use up. The, all of these canned green beans are from last year. I only have, I don't know, 12 jars maybe, 11 jars. And then here are some freeze dried green beans. We don't love them this way. Um, so I don't know. They might be fine just like in something, but just to like put them in a pot of boiling water and eat them. None of us loved the texture, so they will not go to waste though. Coming up here we have, I like to keep these on hand because in a pinch you can make a delicious Alfredo sauce. You know, it's shelf stable. Parmesan cheese, we have tomato sauce right here. I use that in quite a number of things. Tomato paste on top. I could actually probably get some more tomato paste because I'm going to be using 
quite a few of these in my spaghetti sauce coming up here. And then back there I have Rotel and I have two boxes underneath that one right there. These are all diced tomatoes. I use a lot of diced tomatoes in different recipes. This bottom one is crushed tomatoes and I do have room back there so I do need to, it's on my grocery list this month to get some more crushed tomatoes because I use those in quite a few recipes as well. Right here, this is my store-bought spaghetti sauce. I like this red curry paste. It just gives a really good flavor to everything. I could grab a couple of mo more of those actually. Green chilies. Um, we have some store-bought Alfredo sauces. Those are just a good to kind of mix it up. Just a good pantry meal. We have enchilada sauce back there. Salsa, different types of salsas right here. Just a couple things of hot dog chili sauce, which we enjoy. And then I don't use kidney beans a ton. There's really only like one recipe that I use kidney beans in. So that's why there's only three of them. All of these up here have specific recipes. So the beef consomme and the French onion, that's what I do, our French dip sandwiches. Um, cooking those. These are all pinto beans back here. These are cream of mushroom, cream of chicken soups under here that I use in a couple recipes. And then the, this one is all black beans right here. I think. All right, I'm definitely running out of room. I've just made some more. I did some peach jelly, strawberry jam, um, we've got honey back here. I like to keep some lime juice and lemon juice back there, just in bottles. Here are, here's the peanut butter stash. I'm really the only one that likes this peanut butter. Then I have regular peanut butter back there. There's about five of them. We do about one a month, so I could grab a couple extra peanut butters. These are all spaghetti type noodles and you can see there's some space here. This used to be full, but you'll see when we make it over on the other shelf. I'm trying to eat through all of the like white pasta we have and then I've been replacing it with brown rice pasta just for a healthier option. This is brown rice pasta here. These are like penne, I don't know, these are like casserole noodles. These are like more casserole noodles. And then here's like the macaroni pasta salad type noodles here. Uh, I think this is like canning stuff up here. And then right here, I have a teeny bit of um, Four Patriots. Um, I don't know, I got a good deal online on some freeze dried like food packs. Just some ramen noodles. We don't eat those a ton. I guess you could call those like emergency type things. We very rarely eat those. And then just some fun bags of sweet potato chips that I enjoy that Sam's Club doesn't always have. So I like to stock up when we have them. Okay, now I'm gonna show you in these tubs here and then we'll go on to the next shelf and I hope I'm not going too slow or not going too fast but I don't want this video to be like 45 minutes long so I'm trying to give you the information without going too fast or too slow so let's look in these tubs all right this top one is what I have freeze-dried so this is mostly sweet corn in here we got a lot of sweet corn um I know be sweet corn actually. Oh no, there's I did some tart cherries in here. I know that there's some apple slices down in there somewhere. One bag of blueberries. Those do not turn out very well in the freeze dryer, so don't try that. Alright, then the next one, this is sugar, and so I do need to get some more sugar. We don't use a ton of sugar, and I also have all of these jams and stuff. Um, and honey and um, I probably should get some maple syrup but I'm really the only one that likes maple syrup so I try only to keep stuff that we actually 
like and that I use all the time, but I do need to get some more sugar, even though we don't really use it all that often. Ow. Then this bottom one is overflow. Um, this is like the newer flower, so this is where I'm adding newer flower, and I'm working my way through that flower right there. All right, coming over here, this is all oats. We don't eat a ton of oats except in like a couple of recipes. I mean, obviously if we were really hungry, my kids would eat oatmeal for breakfast, but none of us really prefer that. And then I just have like a couple extra. This is my favorite granola that Costco doesn't always have. And then I really like these stevia sweetened chocolate chips to use in different recipes. Here is our dried milk, and I am perfectly good storing this because I did actually go through a whole bag of it with the kids. They liked it, it was totally fine. I just mixed it up in a um, half gallon jar. I have just a couple of things of these um, hash brown potatoes. They do have some ingredients in them that I don't love. Um, that is something I would like to try in the freeze dryer. I have this. This would be considered something that I'm like never going to use unless I can't get eggs, obviously. I mean, I would use it if it got close to date or whatever, but it does have like a 10 year shelf life. Bunch of different spices. These are just all the spices that I use. And then back behind that is some salt. And I do have a giant thing of sea salt up in my pantry that I'm working through. Some more spices down here, some baking supplies. So I have some minced ginger. We like ginger in a lot of different recipes. Baking powder, baking soda, yeast. This is actually a newer thing of homemade. I should probably stir it up a little bit, but this is vodka and vanilla beans. And so, in like another year, that's gonna be perfect. So for vanilla extract, artichoke hearts, there's a couple recipes that I like, and it's just a good thing to have on hand. Just a few things of mandarin oranges and dried cherries. The, we use these in a couple of Asian dishes that we like. I have hominy for our taco soup recipe. And then I definitely will use this stuff, but I got like some stir fry vegetables and some baby corn just in the event that I couldn't get some vegetables for a while. That makes a very easy pantry meal. And then same thing with the collard greens. It's just like a nice shelf stable vegetable um, to kind of switch it up a little bit. I have quite a bit of pumpkin that I actually need to... Yeah, the best by date is coming up and I have quite a few of those. Um, so I can do something with that. We'll figure it out. Refried beans here, three things of those, but of course they've been, you know, they're not all full. I have one thing of corn down there. I don't do a whole ton of canned corn. I have some greens that I have canned, some jalapeno stuff, some zucchini dill relish here. These are all green beans back here. There might be corn. Nope, those are all green beans. So I do need to get using these up because we really like fresh or frozen, but I need to get using those up. I have about a million and one um, pickles. <laughs> I got pickles coming, on my, coming out of my eyeballs. And then back there I have some peaches right here that those probably need to get used up. They're a couple years old. And then these are older pickles that I'm gonna turn into, once I open it, I'm gonna chop it up like relish because they do lose some of the crispness. These are from 2020. Little bit of potatoes back there. And then some pickled coleslaw here. Sauerkraut, applesauce, and then this is grape juice concentrate that we had made a couple years ago, which is absolutely delicious. Down here, I have some water, some jugs of water. We do have an alternate source of water if we were to need that. Then I have my laundry soap. I always like to keep a full one, extra one back there. So when this one's gone, I will order another one. 
We have an extra thing of trash bags, aluminum foil, Clorox wipes, like sponges, dish soap, bleach, paper plates. These actually are wood pellets for our um, smoker wood pellet grill. And then I also have charcoal out in the garage. Um, something to think about if you don't stock that kind of thing. These are Jericho's like protein chocolate milks that he likes that I try to keep a stock of. Then this is the toilet paper. The napkins. I, looks like I have some more sponges that belong over there. Oh, I forgot there's also a dishwasher tabs there. So this is our toilet paper. This is about six months worth for us, um, which should be good. And then here I have some more, I'm pretty sure this is all corn. And I do have some shredded zucchini in here that I have freeze dried. Then coming over here, I have canned venison. I have extra jars. This is usually where my canners live, but I'm canning right now, so some of it's upstairs. This is chicken broth right here that I've canned. This is brown rice pasta. There are 10 pounds in each box, so that's 20 pounds right there. These are all uh, black olives back there. And then I do have a couple things of protein here, some bacon, and then we really like these beef sticks from Costco, so I'll get some more of those next time I go. Try to keep all the meat together. I have a couple things of beef. I have, this is beef also, salmon, chicken, tuna. This is all chicken. Chicken has gotten very expensive. I'm pretty sure I used to get this six pack for $10. This six pack is now $15, is that right? Um, so I try to use it sparingly. This is all chicken broth right here. I like to do the bone broth because it has a lot more protein and I also like just chicken stock. This one is delicious from Costco. It's very flavorful. These came for free, these like sticks of bone broth, so I just put them down here. Um, thought that would be a good grab and go thing if I ever needed to. And then this is beef broth, beef stock. I have some different kinds of coffee filters back here and then coffee and coconut water. Then down here, this is where I keep all of my avocado oil. I go through about one of these a month. I have one olive oil here. I have some coconut oil, some ghee, and some vegetable shortening. I only use that in a very few couple of recipes. And then this actually is just for science experiments. I don't cook with that anymore. I have lots of white vinegar. I use it in canning. I use it in cleaning. Lots of different things. This is kind of the condiment section. I have different mustards. I canned these last year, these banana peppers. I use those in a roast recipe, which is also very delicious with venison, like a venison roast. That is some more mustard. I have some mayos. I just like the plain old bad for you mayonnaise. I've tried the healthy ones and they all have a funky taste that I just don't like. So I get the unhealthy mayo. A couple of mustards, ketchups. My kids actually prefer this one right here, so I switched and I've been buying that one, but we have a couple more of these to get through. I have a soy sauce, which we use pretty regularly in some Asian dishes. Here's kind of like the nut section. I have a couple things of peanuts, barbecue sauce, toasted sesame oil. I always keep Frank's Red Hot sauce. This is the Aldi kind. Um, I use that in a number of different recipes and then I always keep a couple of salad dressings on hand. I make our ranch dressing so I don't need to stock that. Some almonds and then some extra 
stevia packets. I like those in tea and different things. Okay, down here, some extra red wine vinegar. This is like overflow vinegar because it didn't all fit up there, but back there I have an apple cider vinegar and I'm actually going to be making my own apple cider vinegar when I uh, make some applesauce this fall. I have some more olives, some green olives this time. I have a big thing of molasses, some Worcestershire sauce. Here, um, I like to keep a stock of these brownie mixes. They're just really good, especially with avocado oil. They're from Aldi. And then I have two things of quinoa here. Here's all my dried beans, various different kinds. Coconut milk, and I actually just put this on my list because I like to keep two of these stacked. There's a couple recipes that I use that. I have an almond flour that just I use basically when I'm doing like low carb stuff. I have some, what is this one? Masa flour, I think, and I have cornmeal. These are all the lentils that I have, and then popcorn. So I make regular popcorn, and then I've started making kettle corn with just a teeny bit of sugar, and it's like sweet and salty, it's so delicious. So that is that shelf, and then I just am out of room, so I need to figure out where to put these. These are mung beans and alfalfa seeds. And these are so that I could make sprouts. I actually love sprouts. Um, so I have everything that I would need to make sprouts if I wanted to get some like roughage and veggies in the winter. And then I have two more boxes of this Tinkyata brown rice pasta. There are 10 pounds in each of those. So I have 40 pounds of pasta right there plus everything that is over there. That is everything that is not in my freezers and fridges. And I consider all of that like my six month food storage. There's a couple of things there that would be more longer term storage, but um, this is my six month food supply. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I like to watch videos like this just so I can see what other people are storing. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. And by all means, if I am missing something, I would love for you to comment down below. Um, but we use all of these items regularly. So thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.